Oh, they're going to sell shot and we'll do that before too long. Make sure you stay where you are. But as you can see, Robbie Savage is also with us here. But Robbie, it's one of those days where everybody wanted in on the act. The average age of the four goal scorers for United, 22 years old. Looking good. Yeah, and those front three, Greenwood, Rashford and Martial combined, have scored more this season in all competitions than Liverpool's front three, which is quite a fascinating stat. And, you know, if I said to you and Rio, when was the last time Manchester United scored five goals at home in the Premier League, what would the answer be? Well, you're going to tell us, aren't you, Robbie? I'd say about eight and a half years, yeah. 2011. 2000, 2011 against Wigan, 5 0. So it's the scoring wow. goals now that they are, as Real said, Ollie's at the wheel, Real! <laughs> there you go! It was a brilliant performance. It's a shame, of course, there's no fans there to witness it, uh, but the players certainly enjoyed themselves. Let's hear from one of them right now. Marcus Rashford can give us his thoughts. <laughs> Marcus, that impressive run continues. The goals keep flying in. It looked like everybody enjoyed themselves out there. Yeah, um, you know, it's definitely enjoyable when you, when you win games, but. You know, just to be, to be playing at Old Trafford um, week in, week out, it's an amazing feeling. And, you know, like you say, the, the lads enjoyed it today. And, you know, these are the type of performances we want to be want to be putting in. Um, a bit better defensively, but, you know, it's it's football. And, but, yeah, it's a definitely exciting time. You're 20th, Anthony Martial, 20. Mason Greenwood, 15. It looks like you're all trying to outdo one another up front. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, you know, for us, it, it doesn't really matter who scores, just as long as there's someone scoring. And... Putting, uh, putting the points on the, on the table um, but you know when, when, when we're all in goal scoring form um, you know Mason's been on fire and he's been on fire um, so it's it's always positive for teams if the, the forwards are scoring um, but yeah they've, they've been brilliant all season so um, it's important now to push on to the end of the season You've come through like Mason is now it, it's, he's a deadly finisher in front of goal potentially could he be the best? Yeah I think you know left foot right foot he can, mm. he can finish both sides is, is comfortable for him, but you know I wouldn't I wouldn't put too much um, emphasis on him. I just let him play his football and do what he does. And you know, like you seen today, that's what he does. He, he scores goals when when other people can't score goals. And and you know, it's a big big bonus for us to, to have him in the squad. You did mention that some slips at the back, but you're such a free scoring side at the moment. It kind of covers over those kind of flaws in the pro, in the process today. Yeah, you know, we, 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 we recognise them and, and we move on and just try and rectify them. Um, you know, the, the goals aren't, we're not always going to score five goals in a game or four goals in a game, so sometimes we might only score one. So we have to make sure we, we try and not to concede. And you've moved back into the top four for the first time since September, so now it's clear the goal is there and it's getting closer. Yeah, um, you know, we're just trying to concentrate on ourselves and, you know, we're not in control of what the other teams uh, can, on, can or can't do so um, you know we concentrate on ourselves keep improving the, the performances and hopefully just keep picking up three points congratulations well thank, you. thank you yeah congratulations to him let's just show you the rest of the day's results and also have a look at the table as well it was a really difficult day for Norwich beaten 1-0 by Brighton five defeats on the bounce for Norwich and surely looking at relegation for them now but a key win as well for Brighton congratulations to Leicester today look at that not just a 3-0 win a big day as well for Jamie Vardy he joins the 100 club in the Premier League and Leicester needed that their first win since the restart and we'll show you why that win is so important for them now because after that win for Manchester United it is so tight in this chase for the Champions League look at that Leicester on 58 points United three behind them then Chelsea with a game in hand a point behind Wolves with the game in hand, three points behind United. It is really tight in that scrap, but United in form and Ole will be very happy. Meanwhile, down at the bottom, well, the battle to avoid the drop is just as tight. The big issue for Bournemouth isn't so much points on the board, although that is a problem. It's more their form. They just can't pick up wins. 16 games now with no clean sheets, 17 defeats in the last 22. Big, big worries for Eddie Howe. Uh, we're far from done. Ollie, a lot to be happy with this afternoon. Five goals and you're back in the top four. Yeah, but uh, there's still games to be played today. But uh, yeah, fun very, very happy with today. Uh, the energy in the team, the uh, the goals that we score, the the will and intent to go forward. It's just too bad we couldn't get the fans inside. And I think that's a game for the fans. That's definitely one that uh, the Stratford end would, uh, would have enjoyed. The entertainment value is very high, of course. The strikers seem to be competing with one another. I'm just saying that to Marcus Rashford. <laughs> no, they are on the same team and they're working towards one common goal, and that's for the team that we want to get as high as possible in the in the table. And uh, and that's one of the 
positive things about those four, which they, they're good friends and good mates and they keep challenging each other. Mason Green would deliver two goals at very important moments in yeah. this game. I mean, he, he's a deadly finisher with, in sight of goal. Yeah, he's a fantastic goal scorer. I've said, I've said it so many times. So, uh, and this, uh, as you said, the moments that he, he, cho he chose the goals today, they're, they're very important moments for us. And uh, no, the spe especially the second one, you, can, you, you know he's got a left foot to come inside, but I think uh, uh, defenders will have to think about the outside as well because he can score with his right. Left foot, right foot. You Doesn't said matter. the sky's the limit for him. I yeah. mean, you, you, that's, we can see the evidence of that. Yeah, no, he's a very, very talented boy and we'll just nurture him and manage him as well as we can and give him more and more uh, minutes. You warned about the pitfalls, and you've avoided one today, but there were some scares at the back <laughs> at the start of both halves. Yeah, you you know, when you play against a team with the amount of forward players with strength and pace, that can cause you problems, skills. Uh, we, we, we know about Joshua, I've, I've had him myself, and he's, he's always a threat on the counter-attack, and Stanislas, what a, what a nice goal that was. And was there an injury to Lindelof? What was the change at half-time? Yeah, he struggled uh, today uh, with his back, uh, Victor, so hopefully uh, he won't be too bad. And you're in the top four, as I say. I mean, the, the object now is to stay there, of course. Do you feel that you're on track? It's just next game now, Aston Villa next, and that's... Uh, Quite a few days of recovery, so that's that'll suit us well. Uh, we don't play until Thursday, but then after that, it's going to be tight. So uh, we'll use this time well for training and recovery, and be ready for running. Thanks, Ali. Thank you. Well done to him today, Look, Rio, Robbie. Quite rightly, the players are going to get the headlines. It will be their photos in the papers tomorrow. But before we talk about the individuals, I think a mention for Oli Gunnar Solskjaer when you see how he's improving the players around him, particularly those young strikers. And particularly the attacking players. Again, I spoke about coming to the stadium or doing games and watching them as a fan on the TV, thinking, what am I going to get? Yeah. <sighs> Depressing almost, not confident. Whereas now you're going into games thinking, wow, what, how many goals are we going to get? Who's going to score? Can't wait to see the way that they're playing, free-flowing, attacking football. And Oli and his coaching staff have to take huge credit for that because it, not only that, they've got young players as well coming in there, going in unfazed and delivering. The two front two players, 20 goals each, Martial and uh, Rashford. It's, it's, it's great at the moment, but they've got to continue that. They've got to keep consistent. And, I mean, Greenwood, we... Speaking about this young kid, you don't want to give him too much and put the spotlight too much. But when he's doing things like that, what he's done today, you've got to give him the credit he deserves. And here, I mean, this this kid, I mean, he's two-footed, which is great. And I spoke about this before at half-time. Watch his step with his right foot. He steps in, he, he cons Smith the right back, makes him come in, expect him to come inside, takes a step back on his left foot and absolutely pile drives into the top of the roof of the net. Rob, you love that? I think, yeah, yeah. I think you've said as as well, real half time. What foot are you, son? Nobody knows because he's mm. equally as comfortable and as powerful on either foot. And as Ollie said in that interview, there, you know, some defenders might show him on the outside. If you do that, just watch this short back lift. What a strike! Look at that running away from the goal as well, real. And How difficult is that technique? What I love about that is the, is the way he takes it with both feet. He uses both feet to take it away from the defender and he pulls the trigger so quick. They're the strikers I hated playing against. Doesn't matter how quick, quick you are, you could be slow as you like, but if you pull the trigger quick, Jermaine Defoe was another one. He didn't need much space or much time to pull the trigger. The confidence in his own ability to hit the back of the net from that, that range was, is phenomenal. And his numbers are up there, guys, with the likes of Rooney and Owen and Fowler. He's in that company. The question is, how does Oli deal with him properly? How do you give him enough games that he keeps on progressing and keeps on scoring without too many games? Well, listen, Greenwood, his first season, full season, 18 years old, 15 goals. Rooney in his first full season, he got 17 goals. The kid's on the right track. But there's no better person than Oli Gunnar Solskjaer who knows how a manager, when he was playing, Sir Alex Ferguson handled four top strikers at one time and young players coming into the team. He knows how he, he's seen that. He's going to be doing that with these guys. I'm sure he'll be talking to, to, to Greenwood. He'll be talking to Marcus and, and Anthony Martial, among the other players, because he, he, he got it right as a player. He'll be looking to, to use the experience of Sykes Ferguson, I'm sure. Robbie, you, you played under him as well. You saw that. Yeah, yeah just you, you, that performance today, Rio, you know, as an opposition player going to Old Trafford, if you scored first, you knew that angered 
the great Manchester United mm. size. You know, oh, we scored first, we're going to sit back. They are going to come for us now because you've made them angry. And that's what it looks like now. We're not getting too carried away, but you could see they went a goal down. We knew they'd still win the game quite mm. comfortably and it ended up being like that. Do you know what it is? Beforehand, with the previous managers and in the early parts of Oli's uh, tenure, when they went a goal down, especially at Old Trafford, panic set in. Mm. Now, mm. it's yeah. very much... We expect we're going to get chances, and we expect when we get them chances, we're going to score. And that's a big difference. And that confidence that runs throughout this team, based on that, is, is phenomenal now. And yeah, we don't want to get carried away. This is still just the start. But as I said before, we, we seem like Manchester United are on the right track at the moment. And one of the big reasons for them being on the right track is that they brought a man in who didn't just come in and bring quality football to the team. He seemed to lift absolutely everyone around him, Robbie. We've said it numerous times. He was the catalyst for the change in this team, Bruno Fernandes. And, and again, today, it's been proved he just keeps on delivering. You know as well, Jay, when Pogba was injured, he's probably in the treatment room watching training and thinking, wow, look at this guy, Bruno Fernandes. I want to be a part of that playing around great players like he did at Juve. That's no disrespect, because Scott McTominay's done unbelievably well. Great water player. Fred's doing exceptionally well. Matic, look at the improvement in the whole midfield players. And I think even Pogba today, you see him passing the ball early. He's probably looked at Fernandes and thought, you know what, I want to be a part of that. And it's showing those two together the same side. Brilliant. I think Pogba beforehand, and Pogba's had a lot of stick, but I think Pogba beforehand, because he didn't have the, the belief maybe in other players in the creative aspect mm. of the game, he took it upon himself and felt that responsibility and pressure to have to produce big moments and take more touches here and there. Whereas now, as you said, he's seen someone like Bruno Fernandes come in, who has that element of, of creativity and that who wants to take that responsibility as well. That he can just feed people like that as well, as well as be that creative arm to the team, but also be a feeder to people like that. And that makes Pogba look, again, even better than, than what he had been before. And by the way, I love all those other little shots. We always focus, don't we guys, so much on the play and the goals and the passes and things, but to see them like that before and after matches, it feels like a different Manchester United at the moment, doesn't it? We're so used to there being criticism or questions or doubts swirling around this team after the last I, I think that Anthony Martial epitomises where Man United are right now in just his facial expressions, yeah. the difference. He's smiling now. That's a big, big difference to what we've seen in the last couple of years of Anthony Martial. His first goal when he got here, happy, happy-go-lucky type of fella, happy to be here, delighted to be a part of it. You saw it in his whole demeanour. Lost that for a little while. Now again, we've seen the pictures today, smiling, happy, confident of what's going on. What a change room to be in, Rob, eh? Yeah, well, you must be incredible. Ray, the question I want to ask you, listen, so many positives, and United have you know, scored five goals for the first time at home since, in the Premier League since 2000, let me know that. But defensively, for United to be back, really challenging for Champions League, for the Premier League, do they need a centre-half with pace? You know, that would be my worry, Ray. A one-on-one -on -one situation in that central area, have they, do they need a defender with pace? I think they do. I think you see Liverpool are dominating at the moment and one of the things that they've got is that they can allow to, their, their team to just push forward in droves because they've got two centre-halves on the halfway line who can stand there and play man for man because they have that pace, that defensive nous to be able to play man to man and be able to run 30, 40 yards back to their goal knowing that they'll probably win most races in a foot race. Man United don't have that right now at this moment in time and I think the recruitment will be looking at that area for sure. What is this? Is this a quality issue? Um, quality, I think, I think there's, there's horses for courses. There's certain players that are good at certain things. I think Lindelof um, isn't someone you'd back in a race back to his own goal on the halfway line, um, nor is Maguire. And I think if you've got two like that, I think that leaves you open to, to definite on counter-attacks as we've seen many times this season. So I think they'll, they'll be looking to shore that, that area up definitely in this team because I think that'll be something that will come back to haunt them over and over again because it's it, it, something that does creep into their game more often than not. They were sloppy from the restarts a, a few times. Look, before we go to the break, a lot, a lot of fans, probably of opposition teams, will be saying, look at you two, you, know, you started your career at Man U, you won loads of trophies there, you're getting a little bit carried away, they're only third in the league. They're going in the right direction. What do you both think needs to happen in what might be a very quick turnaround before next season? To to add to this team, apart from just a centre-half with pace, to get them challenging for the title? I think they need to add 
three starters minimum. I think it's, I'm, I'm Which talking positions? definite a centre back with pace. I think you've got Harry Maguire there who they've invested huge amounts in. I think he. He's not someone blessed with pace. He's got other attributes that you like, but you need someone who's got pace to get to, to be able to sit alongside him and cover. Um, uh, another midfielder to go in there mm. um, who can dominate physically as well and who, who, who can actually understand defensive positions. I think, yes, Scott McTominay has been a fantastic addition as a young player coming in, the experience as well. Um, and may, I think even in the forward areas, another player to come in and really rival that front three and, 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 and be a part of that another and add one. goals. <laughs> another one, wow. Uh, Rob, go on very briefly. What do you think? What would you add? Yeah, listen, uh, uh, centre-half with pace. And for me, I'd have somebody, if Bruno Fernand Fernandes got injured, that player like a Fernandes. Look at Jack Greaves from Aston Villa. That type of player. Cause I think defensively with Matis Fred and McTominay, they're fine. You know, Pogba's brilliant. I think if Fernandes got injured... Of Jack Grealish type. Does, does Jack Grealish come to Man United and, and be a, a, um, a backup to Fernandez? It's Man United, Veal. Man United Football Club still, for me, one of the biggest clubs, if not the biggest in the world. You know, Jack, yeah. Jack Grealish for me, if, you know, Man United go for him, for me, I would go. Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much. We will shoot.